Mora, they are set. You know, Mora is not used to lately being in an atmosphere that is not pro Mora, but pro his opponent. A little bit of a change of scenery with this crowd behind Reagan for Mora. The anticipation would be that the next time that happened in the, in the career of Sergio Mora would have been in Providence for the third fight against Peter Manfredo. That has not come to fruition. Instead, Manfredo took the trip to right, California right. to be ringside for this fight. Reagan was on the floor two times, three fights ago, and by right hand. Mora, as we said in the fight plan, likes to throw right hand. Stop! Stop! And I say stop, and then stop. Mora has been cut mostly over the left eye. As a matter of fact, he's been cut two of his last three fights. And it happened stop. in the Break. first round each of those times. Peter Manfredo benefited from that. Mora had to overcome it. Did it with ease when they fought for a million dollars in the contender championship. Struggled a little more in the rematch at Staples Center last October. But so far, early on, Reagan not using his height. He's moving his hands. He's being offensive-minded, but also moving those feet and falling into the range, the punching range of the short Amora. Now it's up to Mora as Regan gets in close for Mora to work, not get smothered. Take a little step back, rotate those shoulders. Any way he wants to do it, Mora must punch when he's in close with the tall, long Regan. You see the output by Regan early on. As we said early, Joe, most tall guys that are long and lean, wiry, Don't hit me on the head, Eric. those guys can usually punch. They get good leverage. Again, if you're going to be tall, you might as well use it. Right now, Regan not using it. Let him go, let him go. Let him go. Real well. Stop. Needs to stand on the outside. Use that jab to keep that range, keep that height. And try to force Mora to jump in and then make him pay a price. Time Mora. Oh, yeah. That was on the break. You heard the stop from John Shorley, but then firing off the shot was Sergio Mora. Now he turns Regan around and lands with the left hand, the uppercut, and to the body and puts two right hands upstairs. Well, right now, Mora ending this round in the place he wants to be, in close with the taller man. Big rally from Sergio Mora. If you want to know how these fighters are doing, just look at the location. In close to Short Amora, having a lot of success at the end of the first round. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Round two of our main event on Friday Night Fight, sponsored by Just For Men Hair Color. Big ending to that first round. Stop, Latin stop. Snake, the undefeated Sergio Mora. He said, I have no concerns about Regan's six foot four height advantage because of the quality sparring with Kingsley Aikiki, a very good six foot four middleweight in his own right. Regan needs, as all fighters do, a good fight plan. A good trainer, a good coach in the corner. He might need a real estate agent tonight. Just the advice of a real estate agent. Talking about location, location, location. Regan needs, if he's going to win this fight, to understand the location must be on the outside. Lead left hand from Sergio Mora. Then no, gets to no, the inside. No, no, no. Regan must stay outside, Mora must get inside, but Regan, when he's on the outside, must punch, must use that jab to control the outside and not allow that to happen, not allow his feet to slide in. And on the same subject, Mora, when he gets in close, must not get smothered, must not get tied up, must be effective and productive when he's in close, must move the hands when he's inside. Well, there's a perfect example 
of Sergio Mora's nickname, the Latin Snake. He is awkward. He uncoils. He darts in and out. He will cross over to Southpaw. He just did it lunging with a right hand moments ago. And there's another right hand that gets in and then he gets you, out before stop. they wrap up on the inside. And the strength of Mora can be his quickness and his unpredictability jumping in. That's also his weakness. He jumps in. And if Reagan, a good puncher, is set to punch, when Mora is jumping in, he can suddenly have control of this fight. And as we've seen many times with these tall fighters, you pointed out, tall, wiry, equals yep. leverage, Rich. equals one-punch power. As you said, Mora as comfortable in the left-handed stance as he is in the orthodox stance. Jab to the body and then scoots out. This was the point in the first round where he rallied. Let's see if he turns it on. Regan tries to come forward. Misses with the left hand. Mora invites him. Outside bad for Mora. Inside good. Regan, Mora, end of two. Sergio Mora told us he doesn't worry about any other fights except the one in front of him. But recently, there has been plenty of buzz about a possible fight with Jermaine Taylor, the middleweight champion of the world, or a fight with the elite junior middleweight, Ike Corte. Right now, concentrating well on six foot four Eric Regan. You saw the punch track numbers, the jab numbers. Regan obviously wants to have success with the jab. So far, just four out of 41. Stop, 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 stop. Now some separation. See if Regan can get off. Doesn't fire the jab. Instead, it's a left hook that scores. More to the inside. Stop, 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 stop. Again, part of the formula, the equation for a successful fight for both fighters is to stay in the proper geographic place. Regan on the outside, more on the inside, but another part of that formula is to be effective in those places. If it's Regan, he must punch when he's on the outside. Must use that jab, Joe. And if it's Mora, he must not get tied up. He must do that. When he's inside, be productive. Keep those hands going. Getting the proper location for both these fighters, only part of the process in winning this fight. Then taking advantage, and right there, Mora taking advantage of being in close, rotating those shoulders, letting those hands move, not getting smothered. I got you, I got you, I got you. Saw that crossover that we detailed where Mora went south ball right on the inside, then they separated, he went right back to the inside and was able to score well. Punch track numbers, the body shots, look at Mora, 28 of 58 and counting. You know, Mora has improved as a fighter as we've been watching him. He's settled down more. He used to switch back and forth from righty to lefty, sometimes too much, like a basketball player, a good one, dribbling too much, not shooting enough. Now Mora has settled down. He switches righty and lefty only when there's an advantage, only when he's going to do something about that switch, and he always makes sure when he does switch, Joe, he's out of range. He's not closing those feet, but he's in punching range where it could be dangerous. That's interesting that you use the boxing analogy because if I was to give a descriptive to Sergio Moore in terms of basketball, as you said, I would describe him as that new age kind of point guard that we have come to know in the lexicon as a lead guard, a very stylish ball controller, but a guy who looks to score also as we come to the end of round three and Regan looks to score.